all right welcome back to the seed video and probably the last video on path anatomy cock one you are watching row one tv row one tv and if you are new to this channel kindly subscribe to it and share as well all right so we ended on 150 so we are on 151 autopsy of a 67 year old man who died of hypoglycemic coma that means low glucose content in the blood has shown the areas of connective tissue excrescence necrotic focuses and the atrophy of atrophy of islet of langerhans in the pancreas now atrophy of islet of langerhans in the pancreas usually denotes diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus all right 152 the thyroid gland of a patient is twice enlarged Her patient shows a solid gland with irregular tuberous surface historical examination detects diffuse infiltration of the tissue by lymphocytes plasma cells with the formation of follicles and intensive excrescence of the connective tissue what disease do these facts indicate now Microscopically, Hashimoto thyroiditis is characterized by extensive infiltration of the gland by lymphocytes, plasma cells, immunoblast, microphages with formation of lymphoid follicles having germinal centers. There is also decreased number of thyroid follicles which are generally atrophic and are often devoid of colloid now this is simply telling us that our answer is Hashimoto thyroiditis Hashimoto thyroiditis all right so 53 in the post-operative thyroid gland biopsy among the follicles filled with colloid lymphoid structures with growth centers were historically detected, diagnosed the disease. This is talking about Hashimoto. Hashimoto thyroiditis again. So the same as previous one. The same as previous one. 154. Examination of a patient who lives in the mountain region of Middle Asia shows the enlargement of the thyroid gland that makes swallowing difficult and increase weight. Now, person living in these areas, usually they are devoid of iodine, thereby leading to the enlargement of the thyroid gland. And disease of this nature, we usually call it endemic goiter. Endemic goiter. So your answer is A. 155. Historical examination of a thyroid gland detects moderate atrophy of the parenchyma, sclerosis, and diffuse infiltration of the stroma by lymphocyte and plasma cells with follicles formation. This is talking about Hashimoto, also known as autoimmune thyroiditis. Autoimmune thyroiditis. That is A. 56. A 60-year-old woman had a thyroidectomy done. Histological examination of the thyroid gland detects big follicles of different size with a foamy solid, colloid, sorry. Follicular epithelium is high and forms papilla in some places. Stroma has a focal lymphocytic infiltration. Diagnose this disease of the gland. Now, this is actually typical for diffuse toxic goiter, also known as Graves' disease, which is characterized by the epithelium proliferation with formation of papillae, colloid vascularization, lymphoid plasmocytic infiltration, formation of lymphoid follicles with germ centers, and so on and so forth. Therefore, our answer is A. 
57. A patient who used to be ill with hematogenous tuberculosis has hypermelanosis of the skin. Usually, hypermelanosis occurs when there's deficiency of uh, adrenal gland uh, production or hormones production. And this is also called what? Addison's disease. It's also called Addison's disease. So your answer is A. 58. Gradually, the patient's feet, right hand, nose, and lips began to increase proportionally. When there's increase of bones in size, what it means is that there's a lot of growth hormones being what produced. And that terminology is called acromegaly. So your answer is D. Growth of these bones. 59. Autopsy of a man who died of cachexy has shown parathyroid glands adenoma. Parathyroid gland adenoma. You know, parathyroid is responsible for the production of what? Calcium. And so there's so the deformity of bones, especially of the extremities, spinal cord, and the ribs. The bones are soft, porous, easily cut. What is the most possible diagnosis? Of course, we are talking about what? Parathyroid osteodystrophy. That is A. 160. Autopsy of a man who has shown a bronze color of skin. Now, bronze color of skin is also another name for hypermelanosis and tunica mucosa of the mouth. There are caseous masses in the adrenal glands. What disease? Of course, Addison's disease. Addison's disease. 61. Autopsy of a dead 73-year-old man has shown an enlarged, soft, elastic tuberous prostate. On the cut, on the cut it consists of single nodes separated by connective tissue layers. Microscopically, ex microscopical examination detected the increment of glandular element. Glandular element. The size of the lupus and the amount of glandular element are different. What process is the most possible? Of course, we are talking about what? Glandular nodular hyperplasia. One, there was what increment of glandular elements, and two, there was the presence of what single node. That is why I went forward glandular nodular hyperplasia. I'm sorry if I'm too fast, but we don't really have much time. So if I'm too fast, it's a video. So just kindly go back and play it again. That's why it's a video. Make it easier for us. Okay. 162. Histological examination of the urine mucosa detects sinus glands, sawtooth, and uh, corkscrew like extended excrescences of the stroma with the proliferation of eight cells. What is your diagnosis? This is definitely what? Hyperplasia of endometrium. Therefore, it is called glandular endometrium hyperplasia so your answer is e 63 a patient had an operation on the uterine tumor a macros specimen is a spongy mottled node in the myometrium histological examination detects giant Light epithelial cells, among which there are many dark polymorphous ones. Stroma is absent. Vesicles look like lumens covered with tumor cells. Multiple hemorrhages are detected. How can we term this tumor? This can be diagnosed as chorioepithelioma. Now, this occurs as a malignant fast tumor. That develops from trophoblastic cells. And these are cells that help an embryo attach to the uterus and help to form it what centers. It has no stroma. Therefore, our answer is A. Answer is A. 
164. Microscopic examination of the umbilical vein of a newborn, of a newborn who died of intoxication detects diffuse inflammatory infiltration of the wall. Its lumen is obturated by a thrombus with numerous neutrophilic leukocytes with chiroreaxis signs and bacterial colonies. Now, chiroreaxis simply means destruction of the nucleus of a dying cell. Destruction of the nucleus of a dying cell. So what is the most possible after effect of the thrombus? Usually when we talk about wound intoxication, it is due to what? Sepsis. This is due to sepsis. So what is our answer? Of course. Answer is septic lesion. Lysis, sorry. Septic lysis. 65. Autopsy of a 50-year-old woman who died of uremia has shown adenoma of parathyroid glands, deformation of limbs, spinal cord, and ribs. The bones are soft on incision. They are of increased porosity with tumor-like nodules which have mottled look like and contain what says microscopic examination detects a noticeable change of bone structures focuses of lacunar resolution of osteal and fibrous tissue what is the most possible disease now most of us will probably get this one wrong yeah but the answer here is von Recklingesen's disease. You get me, don't ask me to repeat that. Now, this is a disease, this is a genetic disorder which is characterized by the growth of tumors on the nerves and it can affect the skin and cause bone deformities. Cause bone deformities. So, your answer is A. This could have also been a parathyroid osteodystrophy parathyroid osteodystrophy as it was in the previous question however this is their answer so we go by it 66 a 32 year old woman died during the preparatory period autopsy has shown the signs of spurative endometritis prevalent tumorphobilities of uterine veins numerous abscesses of lungs anytime you hear of numerous abscesses of lungs or multiple abscesses of lungs we are usually talking about what septicopyemia septicopyemia so your answer should be a 67 during an operation on a 39 year old woman an enlarged uterine tube and a part of the ovary with a big cyst were removed. So the notion of the mucous mem membrane of the tube were detected decidual cells and chronic chronic villi. What is the most possible diagnosis? Now the presence of decidual cells and this chronic villi indicates the presence of what pregnancy. Now and since this pregnancy is actually taking place in the uterine tube other than the uterus we call it tubal pregnancy tubal pregnancy your answer is c c okay infectious diseases so once it is autopsy of a young man who died being in coma has shown extensive thromboembolytic infection of the left hemisphere. Anytime you hear something like this, know that there's a blockage somewhere or there's an infection somewhere. Large septic spleen, immune complex glomerulonephritis and ulcers in the aortic valve hidden by polyp-like thrombi with staphylococcal colonies. What disease led to the cerebral thromboembolism? 
this is um, yeah this would be septic bacterial endocarditis however now according to the clinical morphological terms of sepsis we have septicemia septicopaemia septic endocarditis or septic bacterial endocarditis and we have chronic septicemia already you know what septicopaemia is you already know what this thing is so what then is septicemia septicemia is usually characterized by toxicosis that is high temperature and delirium increased reactivity of the organism but absence of purulent metastasis all right now septic bacteria endocarditis is characterized by lesions of valves of the heart valves of the heart so your answer is a 169 a patient who had used drugs for a long time had fever signs of intoxication prayer echocardioscopy detected massive thickening on cardiac valves staphylococcus was cultured in blood in blood the patient died of pulmonary artery thromboembolism Wow. Indicate the heart changes that were detected during autopsy. All right. Now, this is an ulcerative type of endocarditis due to the massive thickening on the cardiac valves. Hence, our answer should be endocarditis poly. Polypo ulcerosa. Oh. So the answer is A. <laughs> hmm. Medicine. Anyways, 70, 170. An injury of an extremity caused long term maturation and the patient died against the background of intoxication. Autopsy has shown general exhaustion, dehydration, brown atrophy of the liver, myocardial spleen, straighted muscles, amyloidosis. How is this disease diagnosed? Hmm. Now, this is a type of chronic septicemia. Yes, chronic septicemia. Now, we have extensive Purulent processes, which is causing intoxication and amyloidosis. Atrophy, dehydration, and decrease in spleen are also marked. Therefore, your answer should be D. Chronic septicemia. Chronic septicemia. 71. A patient fell ill with diphtheria. The second week of the disease, acute heart failure developed and caused death. Autopsy has shown dilated heart ventricles, mottled, flaccid myocardium, histological numerous small foci or focuses of myelasis with small Perifocal lymphoid infiltration have been detected. What caused the acute heart failure? All right. Now, the cause of the heart failure may be due to the treatment of the diphtheria. Don't forget, Pigeon was ill about a week ago. Therefore, we can easily diagnose if it is because of the drugs, then it could be what? Exotoxic, exo what? Toxic. 
So that's for what answer should be bacteria exotoxic myocarditis due to the treatment the drugs used. So the drug could be exotonic, exotoxic. So the answer is E. Okay. Where am I? 72. Mm -hmm. Autopsy of a dead 18-year-old man has shown a mirror spleen weighing 580 grams with a big smear of pulp. Historically, a significant proliferation of reticular cells, the presence of numerous mature neutrophils in sinusoid capillaries have been diagnosed. How can we sorry, term such spleen? Now, the production of large creep of pulp by the spleen is termed as septic splenitis. Septic splenitis. That is why the answer is B. B. All right. Now, tuberculosis. Autopsy of a dead child has shown a primary intestinal tuberculosis complex. Primary affect ulcer of the genome lymphadenitis and regional caseous lymphadenitis. The death was caused by ulcer perforation and diffuse peritonitis development. Name the way of child's contamination with tuberculosis. Now, the mode of Transmission of tuberculosis include inhalation, ingestion, inoculation, and transplacental. All right. Now, with the presence of ulcer, the presence of ulcer in the jejunum means ingestion. The person took in. The mode of transmission was through what ingestion. If it's through ingestion. Then it is called what elementary. Therefore, the answer is B. Elementary. 74. Autopsy of a 17 year old girl who died of lung insufficiency has shown confluent areas of caseous necrosis, signs of caseous necrosis in bronchopulmonary, bronchial, and bifurcation lymph nodes. This is the bronchial tree. So, what is the most possible diagnosis? Now, this can be diagnosed as a childhood tuberculosis, also known as primary tuberculosis because of the growth of injury. Because the growth of injury is characterized by the enlargement of caseous necrosis, which erodes the bronchial tree and what spreads. So, this, my answer will be childhood tuberculosis or primary tuberculosis uh, okay that should be d d d sorry i don't know why this thing is turning this way okay autopsy of a 44 year old man who died of pulmonary heart insufficiency has shown pneumosclerosis and Physema of lungs, hypertrophy of the right ventricle of the heart, multiple forces of one centimeter in diameter are localized in both lungs, mostly superiorly. Historically, in the center of the focus is the area of necrosis. On the periphery, a bank of epithelioid cells and lymphocytes with a few macrophages and plasma. Giant cells were present. Anytime you hear of giant cells, Something to tell you. So what disease did the man have? This is hematogenous tuberculosis. It is characterized by proliferative reaction or formation of granulomas and hematogenous spreading. So granulomas. Giant cells indicate what granulomas. So, due to the presence of the giant cells, among others, our answer is A. 
76. Autopsy of a 48-year-old man who died of pulmonary tuberculosis has shown partly emptied symmetric tuberculous cavina in corticoplural areas with the domination of productive tissue reaction, delicate reticulated pneumosclerosis and emphysema in lungs, pulmonary heart and tuberculous caseous lymphadenitis in bifurcation lymph node. Cohen's focus is located in the third segment of the right lung. What is the most possible diagnosis? Now, Cohen's focus means primary tuberculosis. Hence, this is a post-primary tuberculosis, which consists of secondary and hematogenous tuberculosis. Now, the development of pneumosclerosis, the emphysema of the lungs, core pulmonary, that is hypertrophy of the right ventricle of the heart, and proliferative tissue reaction is characteristic of hematogenous disseminated tuberculosis. So your answer should be B. 77. Microscopical examination of a 52-year-old patient. Patient's lungs detect focus of necrosis surrounded by a bank of epithelioid cells and lymphocytes. Giant run cells. Giant cells. So what are you thinking of? Tuberculous granuloma. Tuberculous granuloma. All right. 78. 40-year-old prisoner died in a lung settlement of tuberculosis. Autopsy has shown the deformation and reduction of pulmonary epices. Numerous cavities with solid walls, 2 to 3 centimeters thick, in the upper lobe of the lungs. Disseminated focus of caseous necrosis in the lower lobes. Diagnose this form of tuberculosis. The presence of the cavities makes it what easier to diagnose this as a what a cavitary secondary tuberculosis, and hence in this case our answer should be secondary fibrocarvenous. Secondary fibrocarvenous. The answer is E. Seventy nine. A 50-year-old man was ill with tuberculosis and died against the background of pulmonary heart insufficiency. Autopsy has shown the lower character of pulmonary affection. The upper part is enlarged, yellow, unisishing, friable with fibrinoids thickening in, on the pleura. What form of secondary tuberculosis does this pathology belong to? Now, your answer should be tuberculoma, or it is tuberculoma. Now, tuberculoma consists of focus necrosis surrounded by fibrous capsules with size about 2 to 5 foot centimeters. Fibrofocal tuberculosis, this one, forms due to intensification of acute local tuberculosis with formation of fibrous capsules. Now, infiltrative tuberculosis is characterized by the extension of perifocal inflammation, whereas gaseous pneumonia develops due to progression of infiltrative tuberculosis. So your answer is... Mm -hmm. No, it can be tuberculoma. This should be D. Yeah. Answer is caseous pneumonia, not tuberculoma. Sorry for that. Sorry for that. Because tuberculoma actually consists of what? Focused necrosis surrounded by fibrous capsules. That is not a description over here. However, let's go to 180. Autopsy of a dead 48 year old man has shown a round formation nearly. 5 million in diameter with clear contours surrounded by a thin layer of connective tissue and filled with 
masses in the area of fair segment of the red lung. Uh -huh. This is definitely tuberculoma based on what I explained earlier on. All right. 81. A patient who died of pulmonary tuberculosis has a white gray focus surrounded by a capsule. Mm -hmm. That's fibrous tissue. Microscopic examination detects a focus of necrosis with a capsule in the absence of perifocal inflammation. This is definitely tuberculoma. So what's your answer? 181 should be good. E. 82. Autopsy of a woman who died with a clinical diagnosis of chronic pulmonary abscess has shown a round cavity. With where am I? A round cavity inside second segment of the right lung. The internal surface of the cavity is formed of caseous masses. The external one of solid pulmonary tissue. Pyogenic membrane is absent. What process is meant? This is definitely acute cavernous tuberculosis. Acute cavernous tuberculosis. Why? Described by what the lesion of caseous necrosis and formation of round cavity. Don't forget that. The answer is C. Eighty-three. A fourteen-year-old patient was diagnosed was diagnosed a Hutchinson triad. Anytime you have Hutchinson triad, please your answer is syphilis. Thank you. So it's A. Eighty-four. An eighteen-year-old patient has enlarged inguinal lymph nodes, painless, solid when palpated, a small ulcer with solid margin and vanished bottom of grayish color is in the area of genital mucosa. Diagnose this disease. Hmm. Another syphilis. Yeah, syphilis. But it's painless. And it's also in the genital mucosa. 85. Painless ulcer. Painless ulcer with smooth vanished bottom and margins of. Come on, the same as previous. So the answer should be what? Syphilis again. So it's D. 86. An ulcer of oval form with slightly raising edges and cartilaginous infiltrate is on the mucous membrane of the patient's cheek. Uh huh. Hmm. The bottom of the ulcer is of meaty red color, covered with greyish, greasy incrustation. Microscopic examination detects lymphoplasmocytic infiltrate, mostly around small vessels with endothelium peripheral. Of course, syphilis again. Syphilis. Why? The bottom of the ulcer is of meaty red color, covered with grayish, greasy encrustation. The answer is E. 87. A microscopic examination of the biopsy material taken from the oral cavity has shown focus of caseous necrosis surrounded by plasmocyte epithelioid and lymphoid cells and occasionally by giant oh guys small vessels with the signs of endo and perivasculitis can be seen term this disease well mm -hmm. this is a gynematous disease definitely but i'll go for e so your answer is e syphilis should be the most correct answer Sometimes they, they are close. 88. A round formation 0 0.5 cm in diameter was detected in the hepatic tissue. Microscopically, it has the following structure. Necrotic masses in the center are surrounded by granulation tissue with plasma and lymphoid cells and blood vessels that have the signs of vasculitis. 
what disease must we diagnose on the basis of microscopic examination? Now, this is a form of tertiary, tertiary syphilis called GUMAS. G U M M A S. GUMAS. Singular GUMA. Which is characterized, which is a localized area of necrosis which may affect large part of any organ or tissue by particularly bones, testes, and liver. And it looks like white, gray, and rubbery formation. Now, this is therefore a solitary hepatic goma. Solitary hepatic goma. That is the one closer to our definition. A 38 year old man died trying to lift weights. Collaptoid state had developed. Autopsy has shown a rupture of extensive thoracic iota aneurysm. During his life, the patient had visceral syphilis. What pathological process caused the atrophy of the aortic wall, its dilation and rupture? Now, this is aortic wall. An aortic wall is the biggest artery and it is made of mainly elastic fibers. Therefore, this is this solution of elastic fibers the answer is c Ninety. a microscopic examination of the biopsy material taken from the liver has shown granulomas they consist of plasma lymphoid giant cells small vessels with signs of blah 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 what is your answer? This is syphilis. Just like the previous question. So it's A. 91. A patient died of intoxication on the fourth day after eating uncooked eggs. Anytime you have uncooked eggs, an infectious disease, think of what? Salmonellosis. Now, autopsy has shown numerous stomach and intestine has shown signs of inflammation and is covered with mucous exudate. Abscesses have been detected in the lungs, brain, and liver. Mm, this should really be what septic. So this is what a septic form of salmonellosis. So the answer is B. 92. Numerous oval ulcers located along the distal part of the small intestine. Okay. Hmm. Were detected during the autopsy of a man who died of diffuse peritonitis. The bottom of the ulcer is clean, flat, formed of muscular or serous membrane. The edges of the ulcers are even and round. Two ulcers have perforated. Oh, this is definitely talking about typhoid fever. Typhoid fever. So your answer should be A. Typhoid fever. Because the Samolina typhi abdominis has a very high perforation power, and if left untreated, it can cause a lot of damage. And they are also mainly located in the distal or the terminal part of the intestine. So your answer is A. 93. Few ulcers, 4 to 5 centimeters in size, were detected in the terminal part. Come on, think of typhoid. Terminal part is A. 94. The death of a 16 year old patient was caused by diffuse fibrinoids purulent peritonitis. Autopsy has shown an ulcer in the lower part of the small intestine. Come on, which represents the form of Peyer's plaque with intestine wall perforation. Again, typhoid is your guy. So your answer is A. 94. Oosh. Okay, that was 94. Now 95. 
Autopsy of a dead man who was ill with typhoid has shown the following changes in the small intestine. We have enlarged group lymphoid follicles rise above the surface of the mucous membrane of gray-red color, so coolant. Their surface looks like convolutions and grooves. Sorry. Microscopical examination detects the formation of typhoid granulomas. What stage of the Typhoid is this picture typical of all okay. right now there are five stages five stages of typhoid changes one we have to call the medulla the medullary or the medulla swelling this is characterized by the development of typhoid granuloma typhoid granuloma we have necrosis Necrosis is characterized by the formation of necrosis and ulceration. We also have three ulcer formation. Of course, this type of ulcer has unclear ulcers or unclear edges. Then we have clean ulcers, where the ulcers are regular without necrotic tissue. And finally, we have healing. Healing. When the granulomas are sclerosized. All right. So with this, with the formation of typhoid granulomas, typhoid granulomas, we are talking of what medullary swelling or the medullary swelling. So your answer is C. C is your answer. Twenty-six. A patient died in the third day after the operative perforation of the large intestine. Large intestine, talk about the colon. With the signs of diffuse prolent peritonitis, autopsy has shown taking mucous memory of large intestine covered with fibrinous memory. Single, single ulcers penetrate to different depths. There's necrosis of the mucosa, fibrin, leukocytic infiltration, hemorrhages, complication of what caused the death of this patient now uh, infectious disease of the large intestine or the colon is usually uh, by what we call shigellosis shigellosis so this should be what c complication of shigellosis has led to the death of this patient multiple red ulcers of irregular form were detected in the sigmoid sigmoid colon is also part of what the large intestine so you are thinking of what shigellosis or shigella all right autopsy mucus so your answer is what shigella c 98 a 50 year old man who seriously fell ill was diagnosed shigellosis he died on the seventh day of the disease. Autopsy has shown a thickened wall of the sigmoid colon and the rectum initial part, a fibrinoid, a fibrous membrane of the mucosa surface. Histologically, deep necrosis of the mucous membrane with fibrin infiltration of necrotic masses were detected. What kind of colitis is meant? Obviously, this is a fibrinoid necrosis, which could be crupus. Or diphtheric. Well, over here, our best answer should be what? Diphtheric. They didn't bring croupers to confuse us. Your answer is A. Okay, viral infections. Hmm, 99. Don't worry, we're getting there. A 67 year old patient had a severe form of cripple, creep, whatever, and died of it. Autopsy has shown. Black lungs. Microscopic examination detected sharp vessel plectora, hemorrhages, pulmonary tissue edema, and exudates in the lumen of the bronchi and alveoli containing mostly erythrocyte. Mm, that's blood. What type of inflammation do these morphological changes indicate? Indicate. This is indicating what? Hemorrhagic. <laughs> so hemorrhagic bronchial pneumonia hemorrhagic so the answer is a question 200 200 
A 42-year-old man died against the background of signs of severe intoxication and respiratory compromise. Ow. Ow. Microscopically on the cards, the pulmonary tissue of all the loops is variegated with multiple and small tuberous hemorrhages and emphysema focus. The technical diagnosis detected hemorrhagic bronchopneumonia with abscess formation, eosinophilic and basophilic inclusions in the cytoplasm of the bronchial epithelium. Diagnose this guy. This is talking about influenza. 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 Typically for influenza. A 30 year old man was ill with acute respiratory disease and died again. The background of signs of acute pulmonary insufficiency. Autopsy has shown fibrinoids, fibrinous hemorrhagic inflammation on the mucous membrane of the larynx and trachea. The extractive palm bronchitis. Lungs are enlarged and variegated. And because of abscesses, hemorrhages, and necrosis, what is the most possible diagnosis? Same as above. So the answer is what? Influenza. D. D. Okay. Now. Hmm? Hmm? Where are we? Oof. Sorry, guys. Okay. I think we are on the uh, two zero three. Two zero two. Sorry guys. Autopsy of a dead forty-four year old man, citizen of Ukraine, has shown a combination of pneumocytic pneumonia, Kaposi sarcoma, B cell lymphoma. Okay, this person is a so so the answer is what HIV infection at this stage. So the answer is B. Two and three, two or three. A pathomorphologic examination of a dead 30-year-old drug user with HIV infection has shown that lungs are taken of deep, a deep, whatever, gray color, low aerial. Interalveolar septa are densely infiltrated with leukocytes. A part of alveolocytes are transformed into big cells with a round nucleus located in the center with light bordering that looks like an owl's eye. Owl's eye. You see this guy? We are talking about what? Cytomegalovirus. The answer is what? C. 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 Children's infection. An 18 year old teenager fell ill seriously. How can an 18 year old be a child? Anyway, and that of infectious toxic shock. Autopsy has shown the enlargement of tonsils covered with gray white membrane that spread to the palatine ox arches, the edema of the soft tissue of the neck. Zika domination has detected the necrosis of tonsils and uh, ox epithelium and the lying tissues are sudden with fibrous exudate that forms massive thickening on its surface. So, diagnose the disease. This is the steric. Yeah, because of the massive thickening, it is not easy to remove this fibrous tissue. Or this fibrous sort necrotic or fibrous plague that has been formed on the tonsils and on the axe accordingly. So your answer is what diphteric E. Zero five. Seven year old child had a sore throat and high temperature on second day of the disease, red eruption, like small densely located stains of poppy seed size was noticed. It covered the whole body except nasolabia trigon. Examination of the oral cavity detected bright hyperemia of the phalluses and large tonsils, crimson red tongue. What is your diagnosis? Now, during the first few days, 
of scarlet fever, it manifests itself as catarrhal tonsillitis, that is, hyperemia of the pharynx with involvement of the oral mucosa and the tongue. So, therefore, our answer is scarlet fever. So, A. 206. During the autopsy, in the liver was detected a bladder like formation with flat surface 5 cm diameter, great amount of small vesicles with transparent colorless content in each cavity. The liver tissue around the bladder is sclerosized. What is the most possible diagnosis for this guy? Okay. For the formation of a, or a bladder-like formation with flat surface, please, this is hydrated echinococcus, echinococcus, I said it's D. 07. A patient complained of fever, severe headache, dyspnea, heartbeat, physical damage detected, Pediculosis. In the year of pediculosis, they are talking about a louse disease or a lice disease. Okay. So, Resola and uh, petition on the skin of the thorax, betos of this, blah, 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 blah. All right. So, this louse disease is also called what? Epidemic typhus. Epidemic typhus, so your answer is B. Don't think too much. All right, 208. A three year old child died being in deep cerebral coma. Autopsy has shown prolonged thickness in the surface of the pia mater in the frontal part of the brain, cerebral edema. Microscopically, pretoria and neutrophilic infiltration of the pia mater has been detected. What is your diagnosis? Okay. This is definitely meningococcal meningitis. Meningococcal meningitis. A form of bacterial meningitis. Gitis or gitis? Whatever. Pronounce any way you want it. Just get it correct. Most important thing. Okay, two more questions and we are done. Oh, I'm so happy. Autopsy has shown a, pl a plethoric yellow-green pia matter. Plethoric yellow-green means what? Pass or pause or pass, pass, good. On the other part of the cerebral hemisphere, sudden with prolent and fibrous as they looking like a cap. What disease is this picture typical of? It's your same guy. Meningococca meningitis. Meningitis, meningitis. So it's A. Finally, 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 our final answer. If you are still watching me or listening to us at this time, it means you should be able to answer every single question under COC1. Another discipline, pathological anatomy. You should be on your fingertips. You should serve it. And you should be smiling with it. You should be enjoying it. Exactly. Enjoy what you do. So 210. A microscopic examination of a five-month-old baby who died of pneumonia has shown a bleak slunk of papebra fishes. Retraction of the dorsum of the nose, high palate, and low location of small auricles, a defect in the heart and magistral vessels development was detected during autopsy. Genetic examination detected. So what did they just go straight and tell us? What is 21st, I mean, trisomy 21? Case goes. Please, your answer is Down syndrome, which is what? C. For tennis syndrome, it's cryotype, 
is 45 OX. 45 OX. Then for Patao syndrome is trisomy 13. For Edwards syndrome, trisomy 18. And for hey, is it Klein filter or Klein filter? Whatever syndrome is 47 x x y 47 x x y beloved we have come to the end of pathological anatomy if you enjoyed this video like it subscribe and hey don't forget to turn on or click on the notification button oh yeah my english has finally come for more update our next session is going to be on biochemistry you don't want to miss it so click on it and let's move enjoy your studies and have a blessed day peace out i'm out see you bye